Hi everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to pick up right where we left off with adrenal gland hormones. Last time we talked about production of progesterone in the adrenal gland, and then how uh, progesterone is converted to aldosterone. Um, so today we're going to talk about cortisol, and if you remember from the very first video on adrenal hormones, cortisol is a stress hormone, and it regulates blood sugar balance. And this pathway overlaps a lot with the aldosterone pathway, and you're going to see a lot of the same enzymes uh, carrying over into this one, but we're going to mostly ignore the aldosterone pathway for today and just focus on cortisol, just so that we don't get too overwhelmed uh, in these foundational videos. Um, so the uh, aldosterone pathway takes place in the zona glomerulosa, but the cortisol pathway takes place in the zona fasciculata. So I've written that up here, the zona fasciculata, and that is the second layer of the adrenal cortex. And the first bit of this process is the exact same as the aldosterone pathway. In fact, we're going to start off with cholesterol, which is going to be converted uh, by cholesterol desmolase to pregnenolone. Um, and then pregnenolone, just like we saw last time, is going to be converted by 3-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, also known as 3-beta-HSD, to progesterone. And then uh, the last time we talked about progesterone being converted step-by-step uh, -step to aldosterone down the line, but today, obviously, we're shifting our attention to cortisol, and so we're going to go in a little bit different of a direction. And so um, pregnenolone and progesterone are both going to be converted um, by the same enzyme. And this one is really, really important to understand as well because we get a difference in sexual development from a deficiency in this one as well. And this one is 17-alpha-hydroxylase. And 17-alpha-hydroxylase uh, will convert pregnenolone to 17-hydroxypregnenolone and will also convert progesterone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. Um, but that's not the only way uh, to get to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. You can also take 17-hydroxypregnenolone and convert that to 17-hydroxyprogesterone by 3-beta-HSD, just like in our conversion from pregnenolone to progesterone, you can use the same enzyme to convert 17-hydroxypregnenolone to 17-hydroxyprogesterone. Okay, and so then 17-hydroxyprogesterone uh, is going to be converted very similarly um, to the aldosterone pathway by 21 hydroxylase, which if you remember, this is one of the enzymes I told you to keep in your, the back of your mind for uh, next time, uh, because this does overlap with aldosterone. And if you can just critically think for a second, since we have overlapping enzymes in both pathways, just think about where problems might occur if we were to take out this enzyme uh, because it's involved in both pathways. Therefore, uh, if it's gone, then we're going to have problems in both pathways. Same thing. Um, so it's going to be converted by 21 hydroxylase to 11 deoxycortisol. And then 11 deoxycortisol is going to be converted by another similar uh, enzyme. 11 beta hydroxylase. So we have some more overlap between this one and the aldosterone pathway. But then um, 11 beta hydroxylase in this case is going to convert 11 deoxycortisol to cortisol. And cortisol, uh, like I mentioned, is responsible for blood sugar balance during times of stress. Uh, so it is called a glucocorticoid. And then aldosterone is responsible for salt, uh, also a mineral, so it's called a mineral corticoid. But um, cortisol, while it does bind to a glucocorticoid receptor to cause its glucocorticoid effects, it can also actually bind to the mineral corticoid receptor, uh, which is what aldosterone binds to. And so cortisol can function both as a glucocorticoid and as a mineral corticoid. And this might cause some problems because if your body needs to regulate sugar, um, but you're getting cortisol that is now interfering with aldosterone, that can be a bit of a problem. So we do have an additional step in this pathway to prevent cortisol from functioning like aldosterone would. And so this enzyme um, is 
11-beta-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase, also known as 11-beta-HSD, and this is responsible for converting uh, cortisol to cortisone. And cortisone, you're probably familiar with because you can get a prescription of cortisone or hydrocortisone um, as a steroid for decreasing inflammation. And that is exactly what this is. Uh, it is basically cortisol, but you no longer can function as a mineral corticoid. And so you only get the glucocorticoid effects from cortisone. And so this is our pathway for today. Uh, if none of this made sense, go back and watch the first video uh, covering the basics of adrenal gland hormones, and then the second one that we had about aldosterone synthesis. Next time, we're going to talk about testosterone synthesis, and then later on, we're going to talk about how differences in sexual development occur during this pathway and the fundamentals of endocrine sex or ho hormonal sex. And so once again, uh, if you have comments, leave those down below. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you all in the next one.